What's going on guys? Tyler here and today we have a new camera view. Look at this new angle right here. Um, thank you guys so much for bearing with my videos. Um, it's still a work in progress, the whole uh, setup and everything like that, but I am getting little by little, piece by piece, put together here. So thank you guys for joining. If you guys haven't hit that subscribe button, be sure and smash that nice red looking subscribe button. Because today we are talking about Elementor and how to be a better web designer, not just for Elementor, but just be a better graphic designer and web designer in general. And then on top of that, how to implement these things in Elementor. So there's going to be some great information in here and a lot of props goes to Elementor, Elementor.com and their blog that they're putting out with a lot of educational information. But we're going to talk all about that in this video, so be sure and stay tuned. Tuned. And of course, I have to say, be sure and check out the links down below in the description. See what kind of price you can get for Elementor Pro if you don't have Elementor Pro already. Elementor Pro has so many great features, features that just really enhance the, the overall design, the functionality. Everything about your website is just like enhanced a lot. So I highly recommend Elementor Pro. Be sure and check out the link down below in the description, see what kind of price you can get for it. It might surprise you. It is, you know, a lot cheaper than a lot of these other drag and drop builders or full on, you know, website design system. So be sure and check that out. And with no further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into my computer and we can talk about Elementor design here. Now, these articles that I'm going to show you come from the Elementor.com blog. They offer a blog. It's the Elementor official blog where they announce things like new releases of, you know, patches or updates or new features that are coming out. They talk about, you know, educational material. They release their new templates on here. So if you're interested, if you saw my previous video about how their, um, how Elementor makes these templates that you basically just drag and drop right onto your website and then you just replace the things that you need. Um, you can actually see they will release a blog article about these templates. Um, so there's all kinds of cool stuff. If you haven't checked out the Elementor.com blog, be sure and do that now. But let's go ahead and just talk about some of these articles. I found three articles here. Um, and they've really helped me understand a lot more, not just about graphic design, but about web design and um, also kind of just like open my mind to the capabilities and possibilities with Elementor. And so now there might be some Elementor Pro features in here, but that doesn't mean that there's all Elementor Pro features. A lot of these can be applied to Elementor free version as well. So be sure and read through these and stick with this. But this first article is seven rules for website color schemes. Now this article talks a lot about the different, you know, color schemes that are involved and kind of what they can mean and how you pick a good color scheme and all that different stuff. So going through here, just to kind of briefly show you what these are, I will have these articles linked down below in the description. So be sure and check that out. Um, I do, I will have all three of these articles listed there down below. So check that out. But, um, it just goes over color schemes and kind of different colors that work together and how you go and pick your color scheme. So if you haven't picked a color scheme already for your brand, this article would be very, very helpful to be able to kind of show you all the possibilities and help you pick those color schemes. And then the other thing is if you already have picked a color scheme, this might offer some kind of complementary colors. Um, it talks about like, let's just go down in here, like the basics of colors. It kind of talks about, shows you the color wheel and everything like that. Um, but then it also shows you here like complementary colors, how like maybe your color scheme right now is maybe like an orange, for example, and um, you want to like add some complementary blues to it, or maybe you have like this triad, triadic um, effect here and you've got kind of like a blue color scheme. Maybe you could add some reds and oranges type of thing. There's, it's, it's kind of just like there's so many possibilities available to you and this article just kind of explains how you would use these color schemes. Now, if you see my other videos in Elementor 3.0, we now have the global color scheme. So this is going to make this article very valuable actually. And this whole process of picking a color scheme, designing with your color scheme, all of that, super simple using the Elementor 3.0 global um, style settings or global color settings. So you can go 
ahead and actually just set up all your colors in Elementor 3.0 and then use them very easily throughout your website. All right, article number two. This is a Monday masterclass where they put these out on typically Mondays because they're called Monday masterclass, but it says essential tips for great minimalist web design. This is an absolutely awesome article. If you scroll down and stuff, you can kind of see what this article is about. It talks about minimalist designs and stuff like that. Um, it gives kind of this like Apple product right here as an example. Um, Apple does a great job of a minimalist design. They have very little um, kind of like extra features and stuff like that. It's very simple, basic. They have a common logo across their products and, and it's very simplest, simplistic, right? So um, that's a great example. Um, it shows you kind of some other different features and stuff and kind of how people apply this to different aspects of their business or different businesses in general. Um, and some of the things that I was really just captivated by is like this right here, this design looks super, super awesome. This just kind of like one gem right here. And this is talking about negative space. So talking about all that, you know, blank space and where to use it and how to use that and all that different stuff. And then look at this, like this, because copy matters, that just pops off the page. If they take nothing away from your website except this, they're gonna be like, okay, they know exactly you know, what your brand is because of that phrase that is right there. And there's nothing else on the page pretty much. So um, it just kind of teaches you the minimalist effect of how to design with this um, kind of minimalism style here. So, um, and it talks also kind of about simplicity too. As you can see here, they go over the Google Chrome. This is a web browser, um, the Google Chrome logo and how they went, you know, from this you know, really fancy, like three dimensional thing, but then it's almost kind of just overkill. Like it's, it's really cool. Like it's, you know, something space agey, but then, you know, you kind of get something more simpler like this or like this, and it's just simpler and it's just easier on the eyes. It's easier to comprehend and it just kind of has that more modern and minimalist feel. So um, definitely, I, I definitely recommend this article if you're looking for to learn kind of like this minimalist design and this modern design, which most people are. Most people want this modern and simple and you know clean cut and um, just kind of this, this minimalist design. So I definitely recommend this article right here. And last but not least is the principles of website design every web professional should know. This article is awesome. I think I saved the best for last here. This article is absolutely killer. So um, I went through it and learned so much about design. So this article is kind of broken down into two parts. They have the user experience and these are actually going to be like UX laws or UX stands for user experience. But um, these are going to be like laws that they actually like are principles that you should follow when you're designing websites for the best user experience possible. Um, and then further down, they're gonna have the section that talks more about here, the 10 usability commandments. And these are just gonna kind of be um, you know, ways to use the website and kind of like the more backbone of the website of how it's actually working and functioning. So <laughs> the this article just talks so much about things that should be implemented into your website. So if you haven't read it and you only read one article, I highly recommend it be this article because it's just, it works really well. Um, for example, the first point is make the main actionable targets easy to reach. Sometimes you go to these like landing pages and you have to scroll down like miles to get to the actionable button. And yes, maybe there's only one actionable button and maybe they really force your attention to there. But if you gotta go like way down or it's way hard to get there, or you know, sometimes you develop things for um, desktop where you like hover over things, but that doesn't translate to mobile. And so it's talking about kind of like, how to make things that you know function well on the platform that they're using and are kind of behaving as expected um it talks about here like the actual this is a little bit more of like the psych psychology of the actual website but um to keep users choices to a minimum so giving them you know one or two options versus like you know eight options like what do you want to do on the website here's so many different things to choose from and it's kind of like overwhelming but when there's only one or two options to choose from it it's a lot more targeted a lot more directed and you have their focus a lot more you know um, in check there so um, there's also place related elements um, in common areas so kind of 
creating like this flow throughout your pages. Now I wanted to show you this one, number four. This is actually super um, important because when we're designing a website, we're not necessarily designing everything from scratch. When a person comes to our website, they expect certain things to happen in certain ways. There's not just like, we're not, this is not the first time they've ever been to a website, so we don't have to build from the ground up. We have things like menu buttons, which they're gonna have an expectation of what's gonna happen when they tap that menu button. We have things such as, you know, call the action buttons. They expect th certain things to happen when they click that. And so this kind of talk about this Jacob's Law and using familiar scenarios and logic, it kind of talks about how to create this flow and transition for your customer and not put any real like surprises in there um, that would kind of deter from the how their understanding of the website is is going to work so it's basically for example somebody comes to your website they have an idea that hitting the menu button is going to pop up the menu hitting the call to action button is going to take them to the checkout page they have this kind of preconceived like um, model of how this site works so it talks about sticking to that and and really kind of making the adjustments and the and the surprise factor more in the design and the and the feel that they get from the website not in the user experience so i was i thought that was very important you know something i hadn't really thought of but you know sometimes when you're like oh maybe if the menu button like floats up a pop-up that would be really cool you know but you don't really want to stray too much from the typical user experience that people you know interact with in businesses that they trust and it also talks about when you do stray from that it, it kind of can help it it can promote that this might not be a trustworthy website that maybe it's you know a little bit different than these other brands that you trust all right guys that about wraps it up that's that's all i have for you today but thank you so much for watching today's video i really appreciate it i hope you take a look at these three articles and i hope that they really inspire you to be a better web designer to learn more about graphic design and and really just implement all this stuff into your website because you can really make your website pop you can really make your website just look a lot better if you have all these different you know elements and kind of the user experience, the minimalist design, the, you know, using all the power of Elementor to its, its fullest potential. So I really hope you guys take advantage of these articles. Check out the elementor.com blog. They, they got some awesome other articles on there. And if you haven't upgraded Elementor Pro yet, Elementor Pro has so many different features. I always recommend it. So be sure and check out the link down below in the description. It is absolutely awesome plugin. And last but not least, smash that nice red look and subscribe button if you wanna see more videos just like this one. It would really help me and it helps me grow the channel. So thank you guys so much. And for those that are returning and watching again after subscribing, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I really, really appreciate you. So thank you so much. Have a great day guys and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Take care.